Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 4th of November. Third wave of COVID-19 cases in Indian capital, says Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. Pakistan views Sindh Balochistan as threat to its identity, says former diplomat Haqqani. And India, US, Japan and Australia kickstart maritime exercise amid China tension. And now for all the details. India's COVID-19 caseload went past 8.3 million, while the number of recoveries surged to 7.6 million, pushing the national recovery rate to over 92% on Wednesday. Though the spread has slowed down since the September peak, cases are rising again in some parts of the country, including the capital, New Delhi. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival on Wednesday said that the recent surge in coronavirus cases in the national capital can be called the third wave. India recorded 46,253 new coronavirus infections in the last 24 hours on Wednesday, with cases rising again in some parts including the capital New Delhi. With 8.3 million confirmed coronavirus cases, India is the world's second most affected country behind only the United States. But the spread has slowed down since the September peak and the country has reported less than 50,000 infections daily for 10 straight days. Still, infections are rising in some parts of the country even as active cases decline nationwide. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Wednesday said that the recent surge in coronavirus cases in the national capital can be called the third wave. In the past few days, the coronavirus cases have been released. I understand that this is the third wave, because in the beginning of September and October, the cases have been reached down to 3,000 cases. We have been looking at the state of the state. I want to say that we don't have to worry about it. We have been looking at the state of the state. The government has warned that cases could surge during the ongoing festival season, which runs until mid-November asking people to wear masks and maintain social distancing. The start of the festival season in India has been marked by crowds apparently ignoring the dangers of coronavirus. The air quality index in Indian capital New Delhi remained in the poor category on Wednesday, while a thick layer of toxic form enveloped the Yamuna River following discharge of industrial effluents. Residents expressed worries as Yamuna is one of the main sources of water for the city and had earlier seen dipping pollution level during the coronavirus lockdown. Residents of New Delhi on Wednesday said they were worried as the pollution level in the Yamuna River, one of the main sources of water in the Indian capital, has been resurging after going through a dip during the coronavirus lockdown. A thick layer of toxic foam enveloped Yamuna following the start of industrial pollutants, including detergents, into the river, while the air quality index in the city stood at 296 in poor category on Wednesday. Residents complained of breathing difficulties, while a thick blanket of smog drastically reduced visibility on roads amid persisting conditions of air pollution. the lockdown, the whole लेकिन अभी कुछ चंद महीनों के मतलब लॉकडाउन खुलते ही हल्का फुल्का बहुत बुरा हाल है पूरा जमना जी पूरी गंदगी से घिरी पड़ी है पॉल्यूशन बहुत ज्यादा है सांस लेने में दिक्कत हो रही है एक्सपर्ट्स से अपार्ट फ्रॉम द ऑनसेट ऑफ विंटर सीजन स्टिल विंड्स एंड ड्राई वेदर अराउंड द नेशनल कैपिटल वेहिकुलर पॉल्यूशन एंड स्टबल बर्निंग इन नेबरिंग स्टेट्स आर सम ऑफ द की फैक्टर्स कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टू एयर पॉल्यूशन इन न्यूज़ फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान as second wave of coronavirus grips Pakistan, Prime Minister Imran Khan has said that his country cannot afford to go into lockdown again 
and urged everyone to strictly follow the preventive measures. Pakistan on Tuesday recorded 4.94% COVID-19 positivity rate, highest in three months. It has so far recorded over 330,000 coronavirus cases. Pakistan's NCC National Coordination Committee has ruled out imposing a complete lockdown in the country to stem the virus spread, despite a continued spike in the number of new COVID-19 cases. The decision was taken during a meeting of the NCC on Tuesday presided by Prime Minister Imran Khan. Imran Khan on Tuesday said the country could not afford another national lockdown and urged the masses to strictly follow the preventive measures against the novel coronavirus. Pakistan has so far recorded 337,573 coronavirus cases and close to 7,000 deaths. Sindh province has the highest number of cases. Meanwhile, authorities have made wearing of mask mandatory at public places, announcing that a fine and punishment of imprisonment could be slapped on the violators. It had directed the provinces to ensure compliance with mask wearing SOPs. Moving on, former Pakistani ambassador Hussein Haqqani has said that Pakistan does not want to acknowledge Sindh and Balochistan as it views those who want to maintain their identity as a threat to the nation. Speaking during a virtual conference on Sindh, he highlighted enforced disappearances being used as a tactic to muzzle dissent in both Sindh and Balochistan. Former Pakistani ambassador to the U.S. Hussein Haqqani has said that Pakistan does not want to acknowledge Sindh and Balochistan as it views those who want to maintain their identity as a threat to the nation. Haqqani said what is going on in Pakistan is an attempt to eradicate identity while speaking about gross human rights violations against the Baloch people and the Sindhis during the 32nd International Conference on Sindh this past weekend. The state of Pakistan is an authoritarian state and it's a national security state. It is based on an ideology. In my book, Pakistan Between Mosque and Military, I describe quite clearly what that ideology is. And the problem with the ideological construct of the state is that anybody who has a question about it, anybody who does not toe the line about it, somehow is seen as threatening the state. Activists have long blamed Pakistani army and intelligence agencies for enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings of political activists and innocent people in Sindh and Balochistan to silence critics and instill fear. Human rights defenders say Pakistani forces operate with impunity in these regions and any attempts to highlight the situation is muzzled. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. The death toll from the Kabul University attack rose to at least 35 on Tuesday as students protested over rising violence and the country marked a day of mourning. Although militant group Islamic State claimed responsibility, but some Afghan government officials have accused Taliban of involvement. The death toll from an attack on Kabul University rose to at least 35. Reports suggested on Tuesday as students protested over the attack and the country marked a day of mourning. Gunmen barged into the university on Monday in what was the second attack on an educational institution in the Afghan capital in just over a week. Both the attacks have been claimed by the Islamic State militant group. Most of those killed were students and around 50 more people were wounded. The Taliban has denied any part in the attack but some Afghan government officials, including first Vice President Amrullah Saleh, have accused Taliban of involvement, saying there are many evidences to prove the claim. Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid rejected the remarks by Saleh on Twitter and said it is an attempt to defame the Taliban. Violence has continued to plague Afghanistan despite efforts by the Afghan government and the Taliban negotiators to try to broker a peace deal in Doha as the United States withdraws troops from the country. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan Navy, Coast Guard and villagers sprang into action on Monday to save a port of wells beached on Panadura area and send them back into deep seas. 
though they worked throughout the night to refloat beached whales, but not always saved and carcasses of some lay scattered on the beach on Tuesday. Villagers and the Sri Lankan Navy worked throughout the night to refloat beached wheels, but not all were saved and carcasses of some lay scattered on the beach on Tuesday. Villagers defied a coronavirus curfew to join the Navy and Coast Guard, wading into the breaking surf to push the small whales back into the water at the Panadura Beach south of the capital city, Colombo. More than 100 whales had been rescued after becoming stranded on the beach. The Navy said four of the whales died during the overnight rescue operation. The phenomenon of whales getting stranded in shallow water remains largely a mystery to scientists. In September, several hundred whales died in shallows of the coast of Australia in its biggest stranding on record and one of the largest in the world. India, the United States, Japan and Australia began their largest joint naval exercise in over a decade on Tuesday, seen as part of efforts to balance China's vast military and economic power in the region. The annual Malabar War Games that India holds with the United States and Japan have been expanded to include Australia this year to cover all members of the Quad Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. Five ships of the Indian Navy, including a submarine, were deployed in the exercise along with U.S. Navy's John S. McCain missile destroyer, Australia's Ballarat Frigate and Japanese destroyer, the Indian Ministry of Defence said. There will be no contact between the military personnel of the four nations because of COVID-19 restrictions during the first phase of the drills running till November 6. The exercises come at a time when the host India is locked in a military standoff on land border with China. A medical student from India's Jammu and Kashmir, Sadat Mohiuddin Bhatt, has become an inspiration for many for spreading awareness on social issues through digital platforms. He has now started a podcast to promote Kashmir's diverse languages and rich Sufi poetry after witnessing growing disinterest among the youth towards the local culture. Sadat Mohiuddin Bhatt, a medical student from Anantnag district of India's Jammu and Kashmir, is an inspiration for many. Apart from creating videos on social issues, acting, dancing and much more since 2015, Bhatt has now started a podcast titled Ao Unhe Yad Kare to promote Kashmir's diverse languages and rich Sufi poetry and culture. He said he witnessed growing disinterest towards the Kashmiri language among the youth which made him to take this initiative and he has been getting a wide response from across the region. This is a motto that the Kashmiri youth are mostly teenagers who have an inferiority complex in Kashmiri. They say, what are they talking about in Kashmiri? So for them, this is so that they can learn the Kashmiri language, the Kashmiri Sufi, the Kashmiri Sufism, the Kashmiri Sufi literature. A paradise for nature lovers, Kashmir has 5,000-year-old rich art and culture which turned out numerous Sufi poets, authors and musicians. Bhatt said he is also writing a poetry book aiming to preserve the rich language and Sufi culture and draw the attention of people, especially youth, towards it. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.